Welcome to the D&D world. Hey everybody, this is Dave on CRPG Dungeons and Dragons tonight, and this is going to be Fantasy. It's a trilogy of games that came out roughly around the same time, if not before, the Gold Box games by SSI, who put the Gold Box games together. So, since I have no idea how these games play, I'm actually going to read the manual first before going any further. I'm not going to read the entire manual, just get a rough idea how the game works, how the story goes, that kind of thing. Already we have kind of like a Marvel Comics kind of cover right here. Guy kind of looks like uh, uh, the original Green Arrow or maybe uh, Vanth Dreadstar. Merlin looking guy here. Not quite sure what he's supposed to be. Little demon looking guy and I'm guessing that's a fairy of some sort or a pixie. So apparently pixies and demon looking guys are going to be part of the party maybe? Who knows? Alright, so well, we've got, uh, we've got about 23 pages worth of stuff. So. Oh, and we got some uh, flavor text here already, so we're going to go ahead and let's see if we can enlarge that a bit so it's readable. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. That'll work. Okay, now I don't have to strain my eyes to try to read it. Tholi's Tale. Newly arrived on the Isle of Gelnor, an adventurer entered the remote town of Pelnor. Gelnor and Pelnor, okay, there's originality there. From the deteriorating condition of the once prosperous shops, it was clear that things were amiss. Just the place where a courageous person might seek a worthy quest. The adventurer hailed a passing citizen. Where might I find information about your town and land? Looking furtively over over his shoulder, the man tersely replied, Ask for Tholi at the inn, before scurrying away. Sure enough, the, the adventurer found the town's storyteller sitting at the back of the smoky, dimly lit common room. Hail, greeted the adventurer as he took a seat on the rough-hewn bench. I've come to Gelnor to seek my fortune. Can you tell me the tales of this land? Why, certainly, said the old gnome. He waited for the adventurer to buy him a tankard of brew and meat pie before convincing his tale in a soft, sing-song voice. In the beginning, there was a barren vastness filled only with stars and light, and it was called the Astral Plane. Within this vastness, a place was created wherein dwelt Zeus and his followers. The magical river Styx flowed and round it all, and it was called the Olympic Plain. Well, we're going with Greek mythology, apparently, with this one. Next, the earth and all things on it, living and dead, were created, and it was called the Material Plain. I already knew the legend of how the world began, and I in interrupted the adventurer. A look of disgust and disbelief made its way across the youthful face. I want to know about Gelnor and what's happening now. Are there adventures, fortunes for the likes of me? Adventures and fortunes for the likes of me. Ha! Foley retorted. Ever heard of the evil ones called Black Knights? There are adventures aplenty with them, forsooth. The adventurer face lit up and he leaned toward the storyteller. Yes, tell me about the Black Knights. Thully continued, the Isle of Garelnor is divided by a chain of mountains into two regions. The west is the traditional domain of human and humanoid beings, with a few renegade orcs and lizardmen dedicated to order and goodness. The rest is inhabited by more exotic creatures, dragons, trolls, and giants. These regions have been waging war throughout the history of the great land, Pal Palnor. The town we are now in lies in the northwest corner. 
Black Knights. What about the Black Knights? demanded the adventurer, interrupting once again. Patience, roared Tholi, his first banged. His fist banged the table. I'm getting there. Since the great invasion by the evil sorcerer Nicodemus, the Isle of Gelnor has been terrorized by his merciless black knights. The citizens of this land hold in such fear and enmity of these intruders that it has even overshadowed their hatred for each other. To maintain their reign of terror, the black knight travels from town to town demanding sacrifices and homage to Though they travel in small bands, no Gal Galnorian can yet claim to have defeated one. Any unfortunates who are spied by these evil ones must surrender all their money or die. Or still, the Black Knights may bring the wrath of the gods upon those who oppose them. Few are willing to take the risk. Defeating the Black Knights and destroying Nicodemus is just the quest I need to win my fame and fortune, exclaimed the adventurer. Where can I find them? No one knows where Nicodemus can be found. But you can start with the Black Knights. You're bound to run into them if you travel in Gilnor. Jumping up, the adventurer turned to leave. I shall gather a band of fellow seekers at the Adventurer's Guild forthwith. A few words of advice, Tholi called out. Whatever your success, it is rumored that new Black Knights are spawned in a fortress somewhere in Gilnor. Godspeed, and may your sword be swift, and the gods be with you. So that's the main story there. Alright, so let's look at what kind of uh, character cl uh, classes we got here. We got races, which are humans, dwarves, elves, gnomes, halflings, and random creatures. Okay, let's take a look at all of them and see what they have to say about it. Races. Race refers to the character biological species. In fantasy, the adventurer can be selected from the following races. Humans stand between five and a half to six feet tall and tend to be equally good at most professions. Dwarves, or here it says dwarfs, are shorter and stouter than humans. They have great strength and constitution. Their brawn makes them makes up for the lack of brain. Elves are an attractive race with life slightly smaller than human bodies. They have higher than average dexterity and intelligence, but less strength. Gnomes are like dwarves, only shorter. While not quite as strong, they do demonstrate greater dexterity. Halflings are small like dwarves, but not as stout. They have greater mental power and less physical powers. Random creatures are generally disliked by humans, so they must pay hefty training fees. They can only be thieves or fighters. When you select random creatures, your character will be chosen from one of the following. Ooh, what's over here? And these are randomly picked. Okay, so random creatures are generally this. I already read that already. Hello, viewer. Uh, Nose are very strong, tall, dark-faced, humanoid covered with fuzzy yellow-brown hair. We got goblins, very dexterous. Yeah, it doesn't really tell much about them. It just gives like a rough idea and that's about it. Very dexterous and ugly creatures stand about four feet tall. They have large fangs, pointy ears, and foul breath. They're small, old, dwarfish types, about two feet tall with gnarled faces. They have low strength, but high dexterity and constitution. Okay, they're going with the old school version of kobolds here. Uh, lizard men stand about seven feet tall. Though humanoid, they're reptilian in appearance with scales along their bodies, a heavy tail useful in fighting, claws, and a forked tongue. They're as strong as gnomes, but not as... Hold on here bright and they have good swimming skills. Minotaurs. Oh, I hope I get one of those. I like Minotaurs. Those are one of my favorite monsters. Uh, looks like humans with bull's head and tail. They have great strength. Ogres are large, eight feet, ugly humanoids with squash noses and protruding jaws. 
They are one of the strongest but dimmest witted of the races. Orcs are ugly goblin types that are strong with good constitution. Pixies are tiny fairy creatures, two feet tall with painted ears and transparent wings. Pointed ears, I said painted, I meant to say pointed. Their dexterity and intelligence run high. Sprites are charming, social, sociable, fairy-like creatures. Because of their great dexterity and lack of strength, they make better thieves than fighters. And finally, we got trolls. With their thick green leathery skin are renowned for their height, 7 feet, strength, clumsiness, and stupidity. Now we get into the professions slash classes. Don't know to get into details in it. Well, we got six of them. We got fighters, monks, priests, rangers, thieves, and wizards. Okay. Okay. Um, perform best. Fighters perform best in combat. Humans, dwarves, and random creatures make good fighters. Monks are average in combat, but they have known. But they know better. I'm making up words. I am sorry. Okay, monks are average in combat, but they know combat spells and have some thieving skills. Humans, elves, and hobbits do well. Priests are fair in combat, but they have many defensive and healing spells. The better priests are human. Rangers are very good in combat, and they know some priestly spells. Humans and dwarves make good rangers. Okay, that's something to note. Thieves are good with traps, locks, and hidden items, but they perform poorly in combat. Their fighting skills are helped by the fact that they can hit a monster no matter where it is due to their stealth. Hobbits, gnomes, and some of the random creatures make excellent thieves. And finally, wizards. Wizards are chiefly spellcasters. While poor in hand-to-hand -hand combat, they know many offensive spells and are extremely important in encounters with monsters. Humans and elves do the job best. Okay. Now we're looking into the commands here. I'll have to go over this later. It's got playing hints in there. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to go through all of this before I actually play the game. I'm going to do some character creation play around with the character creation at least for a little while before uh, getting too heavy into the game. So. so we can make a party of six. Okay, that's good. Alright. Let's go ahead and uh, pop into the game. Uh, this is the Fantasy Memorial set, which is all three games at uh, nine ninety nine, mind you, both on uh, Steam and um, GOG. Okay, so start turn in Pelnor. Okay, we got options: bank, mystic, exit, armory, and in and guild. I'm guessing guild is where we find. Yep. Okay. We got new member, add member, training, spells, drop member, rename, inspect, and purge. Let's see if we have any groups in here right now. Uh, we got a couple of fire elementals or three fire elementals in here. Okay. I think we're gonna hold on to those. member. And we're going to go with a human first since that's like the best standard to start with. And we'll go with fighter obviously. And gave him next to no strength whatsoever. So purge. At least they made this a little bit easier to work with. And some games where I played were 
Can I fart around with the number? No, I can't. Okay, so... The numbers I want to worry about for a fighter, I'm guessing, is strength, dexterity, and constitution. Oh, here we go. And a high charisma, nice. Okay. Hit points of 15, age 20, magic 5, 5, gold and bank 256. Okay, we'll keep him. Input name. Let's go with Ranger this time. Uh, we can do a little better than that. Ranger. You know what? Let's let's try a rando. Let's try a random here. And go with a fighter. Lizard Man, and that's not too bad, but uh, I want a Minotaur as a troll. An ogre. Lizard Man again. There we go. And of course, his numbers are shit, so uh, let's try that again. There we go. Now, uh, ooh, those are some good numbers. We're gonna keep him. We're gonna name him Zed. Okay, so we got two fighters made. I might actually put the Minotaur on front and forego the human. All right, let's go with making that Ranger now. Let's make a human ranger this time. Uh, purge. Let's try that again. Okay, that is actually pretty good, so we'll keep him. that it remembers the key so I don't have to like repeatedly have to move everything around. Uh, I think a thief needs a little bit more better dexterity. Um, 
Demon Cleric. Well, in this case, it's called a Priest, so we'll go with a Priest. Do we have right now? One, two, three, four, five. I think I was going to get rid of Fargo. Maybe go for a monk, perhaps. Make our dwarf a monk. Oh, oh hell yeah, okay. Keep. He needs a little bit more in the intelligence department. Also a little bit more constitution. And I'm not too worried about his dexterity, so I think that should do fine. path to the east lies a small town. To the west is a building called the Red Pony Inn. Yes. You can't afford it, sorry. Oh, we got a fight. Okay. Party options. Beg mercy, threaten, greetings, fight. I guess we're gonna have to fight. Thra thrust, attack, slash, lunge, cast, and parry. And I like the fact that the Minotaur has a Minotaur's head on the bottom there. That's 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 kind of funny. That's going to attack. Slash. Well, it says thrust, okay. Even though I put. Hmm. 
so lunge was the only thing. Okay, let's just put thrust. Thrust at rank one. Okay. Fire flash, okay. Okay. So that how uh, that works. What was that? A night encounter. And here's the monsters. What the hell are those? Okay. Show names. Banters. interesting way to do the combat system. Gives me a little time to think without having to rush too much. Now mind you, this isn't going to be my permanent party. This is just me experimenting with the game right now. Because I've never seen this game before, so I've... I'm... Playing it more out of curiosity right now. Monsters killed. You spot sleeping monsters. I don't them. Can't afford it. Monsters killed. And 10 GP. Yes. You have 198 gold shares for Z. I don't know what any of that means. Each share is 33 gold and 280 experience. So we get all our experience and stuff once we get into town. Well, that's different. Oh, so they're all, they all have clubs right now, okay.
Yeah. Dungeons and Dragons will return after these messages. Hey everybody, this is Dave. Just letting you guys know real quick that on the 16th of this month, that was August, I will be at Legends Comics and Games at 1752 Shaw Avenue, Clovis, California, around 11 a.m. Uh, that would be opening hours for them, I believe. I'll be spending an hour or so over there uh, hanging out, uh, taking some footage, talking to the employees, and uh, just getting to know the layout of the place. Anyway, uh, come by and say hi if you happen to be in the area, and uh, who knows? Bye. And now, back to Dungeons and Dragons. Well, I don't exactly know how to exit out of this menu. get out of the game. No? Alright. Oh, I can put on autosave. That's nice. I guess I'm going to have to figure out the menu on that one. Anyway, um, this was just me doing a test run of this. It's, I didn't think this was going to be a very long uh, stream. So uh, thank you for watching, whoever you are, viewer. And um, thank you for watching on my channel, CRPG Dungeons & Dragons Night, where this will be playing as a recording. In the meantime, you guys take care, and i got stuff to do. Talk to you later. Bye.